Hey everybody. Today we're introducing the gamma function. This is an extension of the factorial that works for more than just the positive integers. Here's the formal definition. It's the integral from 0 to infinity x to the t minus 1 e to the negative x dx. Here t is the variable, the thing that you're actually plugging into the gamma function. x is just a dummy variable that only lives inside of that integral. For instance, gamma of 1 looks like the integral from 0 to infinity e to the negative x dx. And I'll do this one out sort of by hand. After this, I'll move a little bit faster. This is an improper integral, so we need to do it with a limit. Limit as r goes to infinity, that integral from 0 to r. We do the antiderivative, plug in our limits of integration, and then take the limit as r goes to infinity to get that gamma of 1 is 1. Maybe the most important thing about the gamma function is this recurrence property. Gamma of t plus 1 is t times gamma of t. So if you know the value of gamma for some value, you know it for one more than that value. I'm going to flash the proof here for you. If you want to pause and go through it, you can. It's integration by parts. But I'm not going to go through it line by line. So since we know gamma of 1 is 1, we also know gamma of 2 is 1. Gamma of 3 is 2, gamma of 4 is 6, gamma of 5 is 25, and so on. And that's a property that's familiar from the, exp from the um, factorial function. In particular, if n is an integer, positive integer that is, then gamma of n is equal to n minus 1 factorial. So it really just is the factorial function shifted by 1. But, of course, gamma is defined, using that integral, for more than just the positive integers. It turns out that it's defined for any real or complex number that you would like to plug in, except for t equals 0, negative 1, negative 2, the negative integers. One more example would be gamma of 1 half, and that comes up a bunch in practice, for instance, with the chi-square distribution. Um, this is the integral from 0 to infinity x to the negative 1 half e to the negative x dx, this ends up to being the square root of x. And you can prove that using the substitution u equals x to the 1 half. And then you can use this recurrence relation, gamma of t plus 1 equals t times gamma of t, to get a number of other values like gamma of 3 halves. The gamma function comes up in a wide variety of applications. For instance, you can compute the volume of an n-dimensional ball in Euclidean space with this formula, which of course uses the gamma function there in the denominator. In probability and statistics, the gamma function comes up in the context of the gamma distribution, which models the waiting time needed for a certain number of independent randomly occurring events that are all identical, like calls to a pizza place, for instance.